with you in this trimester, we have covered quite a few things. One of our big units back in November was saints, where we did antidotes as well as talked about communion of saints. Um, something else that we've kind of started is our SEL, which is our socio-emotional learning aspect to it. And we do that every other Monday, and we just focus on different topics. We've talked about stress and how to like meditate, muscle relaxation to help just release those toxins and release the stress and anxiety. Um, and we're going to get into some other things, healthy habits, eating, sleeping, things like that. So it's just giving them a different aspect of life. We have just finished our liturgical calendar unit where they actually got to make their own liturgical calendar to understand how our year looks starting with Advent and ending, you know, Advent next year. So they really grasp that understanding of when the important days are and when it starts and when it ends instead of just starting in January and ending on December 31st. Yeah, and then the last couple of weeks, we've kind of slowly been preparing for all the fun of Catholic Schools Week. So we've been working on decorating our door. Um, 8B got to help finish up some service projects from last year um, and just doing some fun kind of eighth grade things. Just creating memories and laughs and kind of enjoying our time together uh, at the start of every day. Hi, eighth grade families. This is a short recap of some of the things we've done in the second trimester. The students have been busy. They delivered informative speeches, uh, three to five minutes long on the subject of their choice, um, working especially on eye contact and good delivery. They've read a variety of pieces of literature, both fiction and nonfiction, including work by John Steinbeck, Travels with Charlie, um, Charles by Shirley Jackson. We um, just finished Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. And they are currently writing, um, doing an argument essay where they are taking a position on the fictional situation in Flowers for Algernon about whether or not experimental brain surgery should have been allowed on Charlie Gordon. So they have to take their position, have specific reasons supported by evidence, and then examine the counterclaims that someone on the opposing side might bring up and then respond to those counterclaims. So um, they're doing a great job and I love the way eighth graders have developed and how their thinking is. In the third trimester, I look forward to doing a unit of Holocaust study where we will read Night by Elie Wiesel as well as a variety of other um, books, mostly nonfiction, I believe, that um, will increase their knowledge of that time period and some of the events of the time. And my final uh, project in the third trimester will be reading and analyzing the novel um, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. So, They'll really get a chance to stretch their thinking and to go into depth in their reading. Let me know if there's anything specific you have a question about. Hi, welcome to Spanish class. Bienvenidos a la clase de español. I'm Miss Lise, and I just wanted to share with you uh, what eighth grade has learned so far this year and what they will be learning. So they've learned so much in Spanish this year so far. We've reviewed the alphabet in Spanish, the numbers from zero to 100, colors saying where people are from. They've also learned uh, some vocabulary words to describe what profession someone is working in, uh, subject pronouns, places, greeting others, introducing others, saying where you live, expressing likes and dislikes, um, talking about activities in Spanish, using adjectives to describe others' appearance, features, and personality, and clothing to describe what someone is wearing. We've re reviewed the verbs gustar, which means to like, tener, which means to have, and ser, which means to be. We've learned how to express possession using the word de, de, and using possessive adjectives. We've reviewed definite and indefinite articles. We've learned how to describe family and family members, ask and tell someone's age in Spanish give dates in Spanish. We've reviewed the days of the week and months of the year, learn how to talk about birthdays and other words and phrases. 
Um, and we've also learned about the following holidays in Spanish-speaking countries. We've learned about Dia de la Independencia, Independence Day in September, El 12 de Octubre, uh, the 12th of October, also known as Columbus Day or Indigenous Day. Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, which is October 31st, November 1st and 2nd. Uh, Las Navidad, sorry, Las Navidades, Christmas in Spanish-speaking countries, and El Año Nuevo, New Year's in Spanish-speaking countries. The future holidays we'll be learning about are Carnival, which is similar to Mardi Gras, Las Fallas in Valencia, Spain in March, uh, Semana Santa, Holy Week traditions, which are very, very important, very significant, especially since uh, most Spanish-speaking countries are predominantly Catholic. Um, so that's uh, weighs heavily in the traditions in Spanish-speaking countries. Uh, Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May. Inti Raimi, the Festival of the Sun. Dia de Simón Bolivar, Simon Bolivar Day. And the Feria de Malaga, which is the Malaga Fair, uh, but it celebrates the reconquering of Spain by the Catholic King and Queen, uh, King Fernando and Queen Isabella. Um, the rest of the year, students will be learning things such as how to talk about school, discuss obligations and plans, talk about schedules and time, how to tell time, ask questions, say where you are going, request food, how to sequence events in Spanish, saying what you do, uh, learning the present tense of AR verbs, expressing frequency with adverbs, expressing obligations with IK and tener que which are two um, expressions or phrases in Spanish, um, using the verb ir, which means to go, describing location with the verb estar, which means to be, interrogative words, using the verb a, ir a to say where you're going, using the present tense of regular er and ir verbs, using the regular present tense verbs with irregular yo forms and the verb oir, which means to hear, Learn how to extend invitations, talk on the phone, express feelings and preferences, say what just happened and what is going to happen, uh, talk about sports, saying what you know, make comparisons, and describing the weather. So those are just some of the things that we'll be working on, as well as the holidays we'll be learning. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to give me a call um, or, or call me at the school or email me. I'll do my best to get back in touch with you within 24 hours, and thank you so much for the privilege of being able to teach and educate your students here at Holy Trinity, and hopefully in a lifelong endeavor that they will um, be using Spanish in their personal and professional lives in the future, or to carry out their mission as uh, Catholic citizens in the world. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Math has been busy and engaging this year, and I wanted to take this opportunity to give you an overview of the content we're coming from what we're currently working on, and where we'll be headed over the course of the next few months. Given our strange year and a variety of different learning formats, we are focused on the essential learnings for eighth grade. Students began the year with transformational geometry. They studied rigid transformations and congruence, then dilations and similarity. And currently, they are building on their understanding of proportional relationships from seventh grade to study linear relationships. They have expressed linear relationships using equations, tables, and graphs, and have been able to connect across these representations. They will begin solving equations of one and two variables, and also connecting that learning to systems of linear equations. They will be learning that linear relationships are an example of a special kind of relationship called a function. And toward the end of the year, they will encounter irrational numbers for the first time and informally extend the rational number system to the real number system um, motivated by their work with the Pythagorean theorem. So what can you do to continue to support your eighth grader at home? Well, with each lesson, students are expected to be working on the practice problems as just that, practice. They know the routine, so first attempt the problems on their own. And then when they're done, I provide an answer key so they need to check themselves. And if there are any that they need to rethink, they should be using their summary or activities or notes from, from the day's learning to clarify their thinking. Then after that and trying again, if they're still not able to get to the correct answer, um, they can use the Mr. Morgan video I also post in Google Classroom. 
He goes through each problem, explaining and reteaching the thinking behind it. So the goal with practice at home is to walk into class the next day feeling confident that um, your student has a solid understanding of the day's work before, which in turn allows us to be able to create so much new thinking um, and new learning. So thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks. I just wanted to take this um, time to let you know how impressed I've been with these eighth graders in algebra this year. They are, without a doubt, some of the hardest working students, and I'm so thankful that I get to spend so much time with them on learning together. I just wanted to give you a little update of where we are and where we're headed in algebra. Um, I touched base in December before the midterm final, and I'm happy to say we've made it through that and are working away at some new material to start the second half of the year. Our current focus is solving and graphing inequalities, including ones um, with ab involving absolute value. Um, looking ahead at the rest of the year, uh, topics will include linear systems, exponents, um, we'll focus primarily on um, polynomial, polynomials and factoring, and then finally solving some quadratics to end the year. Um, this time of the year, I often get a lot of questions about registration for your child for freshman year and making sure you get them enrolled in a just right math class. Um, if they're going to Dowling, typically they'll be placed in a math class based on the placement tests they have already taken. Um, and it will likely, they'll be likely placed in one of three classes, either advanced algebra one, geometry or advanced geometry. And this is similar to other high schools in the metro. And I just wanted to make sure that you know if you have any questions about this for registration purposes to please let me know. Um, I have and I'm happy to communicate with you or with um, your school, the, whatever school your student's attending, in order to help make sure that placement is just right. Um, Finally, taking on a challenging math course in these times has not been easy, and so these eighth graders deserve a whole lot of praise coming their way. They don't give up, and they continue to want to know more, and that's what makes this group so, so, so much fun to teach. Oh, eighth grade social studies. It's always one of my favorite subjects to teach every year. Uh, this trimester, trimester two, eighth graders have studied everything from kind of the events leading up to the American Revolution, the, the war itself, and all of our founding documents and presidents um, of the founding of our country. So we talked about Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, and we're kind of working into the Constitution um, now. So and we've had a lot of fun along the way. I like to kind of sometimes throw things at them that um, maybe are more of a simulation-based activity. Um, I really strive to teach your student that history is a complex topic and there's no one single version of history um, and that's why it's so important that students examine primary sources and secondary sources and apply those historical thinking skills like sourcing and corroboration and um, you know consider context and as they study those sources they then use that to kind of draw their own conclusions um, an understanding of what happened. Um, I also help them understand why American history is still relevant to them today. Why are these past events still important? So instead of just studying historical events and what happened and when was it, yeah, we do all that. But I also challenge them to examine the evidence and create arguments in response to some sort of kind of compelling question or underlying theme. So Boston Massacre, um, you know, was it murder or was it self-defense? And there's no kind of one side to it. And I let them look at it. They came up with their own argument. And then we looked at, you know, what did the court decide it was? And we do this both, you know, with that, but also with Boston Tea Party. Was it vandalism or was it activism? And then we brought those themes to some of the kind of events in the last year with different social movements within our country as well. And so those themes, those argument skills that they're learning, both written and verbal, those are the skills that are transferable even after they leave my classroom. Um, when we got done with kind of the causes of the revolution, they participated in a Socratic seminar. If you don't remember from last year what a Socratic seminar or you're new this year, I'd really encourage you to ask your student about it because it's a great way for them to develop those argumentation and discussion skills in a really productive way. Um, this year in particular, I was really blown away with how much they'd grown since seventh grade. They were, you know, so familiar with the sources in order to use for text evidence that a lot of times they could quote a, a piece of text um, without even looking at it. 
um, the depth of their analysis and synthesis within their small group discussions was some of the best I'd seen. And their ability to ask really thought-provoking questions of each other um, was outstanding. Like they were making connections both from events previous, but also brainstorming and making connections uh, to future things that we're going to kind of study um, this year, which was really, really cool to see them make those connections on their own um, and not kind of be teacher guided. They were student guided. Um, many of them are asking when we can do this again. So I I'm, I'm, will find opportunities for Socratic seminars in the future as well. Um, another big thing in eighth grade is our mock constitutional convention. Uh, each eighth grade student has signed up for one of the delegates that was there at the constitutional convention. Uh, and they are researched that person in library class and are kind of in the process of wrapping that up. Um, they are tasked with debating the structure of our government that was both kind of improving upon the Articles of Confederation, but then I also have them look at our government today because they have the advantage of hindsight and what would they maybe have done different if they were in that room and had that advantage. Um, and so we're still in kind of the preparation stage of the project. Um, so please um, know that your student will have more details very soon and in a few weeks I would, you know, ask them about it. Um, this is often one of the activities that when students that have graduated come back to me, they reference this activity as one of their favorites or most memorable. By the end of the year, we will get through the Civil War and introduce the Reconstruction Era. Um, this is where Dowling expects us to be, and so that is where we will get. Um, we're going to have to kind of really push through here this spring, but that's okay. They're very capable of doing that. Um, thank you for the chance to work with your eighth grader. I just love eighth grade brains. They're right at that cusp of kind of maturing to the next stage of their development, and they're really looking at things um, through an analytical and kind of justice-driven lens, which is always fun and leads to good conversation. So thank you so much. This class has really been a, a lot of fun to teach this year. And so thank all of them and thank you for raising these really wonderful kind of young adults that will be our leaders of tomorrow. Man, I am so thrilled with the eighth graders this year and just the attitude that they have towards science. Um, for us this year, especially in eighth grade, we kind of, you know, really look more at this physical science aspect you know, sixth grade was their earth science, seventh grade was their physical science with a little bit of environmental science, and eighth grade is really like physical science heavy. And so we're looking at chemistry and we're looking at physics and we're, you know, we're understanding how all of these small, little bitty, tiny things make such a huge difference in our everyday lives. Again, like I start every year, we started off looking at scientific inquiry and it just, it draws them all back in. And that's what I love is that, you know, they walk in fresh and new and they walk in with a new understanding because of, of maturities and growth. And it just is a whole nother ball game for them. And I, I thoroughly enjoy it. So after that, we dove right into our chemistry unit and we looked at elements and we looked at bonding and balancing chemical equations because they're going to be doing that in high school. And so I'm, you know, I'm setting them up for success with the basic background knowledge that they need to be successful when they start really looking at like chemical reactions and doing labs like with chemicals and seeing what's happening with endothermic and exothermic reactions. Um, and to end it, you know, it was so fun because we did a element superhero project and all of the kids thoroughly enjoyed it because they, they got to bring out the art side in them. and. But we also tied it in a little bit with, you know, language arts because they had to create a storyline for their comic strip. Um, now we are in our, currently in our um, physics unit. So we're looking at forces and Newton's laws and just how gravity plays a huge factor on whether our forces are balanced or unbalanced. Um, and they get to end this unit by creating a roller coaster that they have to explain what's happening. You know, they get to use all the concepts of Newton's laws and, you know, kinetic and potential energy and where that's going to lead them. Um, so I'm really excited to see their roller coasters. We're not far from starting that, and I know that they're super excited too. Um, next unit's going to take us into um, 
energy. They're going to do some debates as to what energy sources are better to use. And then we're going to kind of end our year with um, looking at the human body. And my goal is to set them up for success for high school biology and their dissection skills. So I'm so thrilled. If you have any questions, um, please reach out.